The first step is to launch a AWS EC2 instance. To do that, go to services, search for EC2, select that. Click on instances. This dashboard keeps changing as AWS keep making it better for us. Click on these instances because that is what we want to create. Click on launch instance on the top right corner, which is in orange. Creating an instance is a seven step process. The first step is to pick a AMI, which stands for Amazon machine image. Each AMI or image will have a predetermined operating system and a few, few softwares that can be used for our application. We are going to use the first one, which falls under free tier. So that will not be charged. And it, it uses a Amazon Linux, which is very similar to CentOS. Pick that. Second step is to choose the instance type. This is where you can pick the CPUs you want, the processors, then the memory. By default, you get one gig for a free tier. So we're going to leave it as it is and a single processor. At this point, you can launch, review and launch with all the default configuration for uh, configuring instance, storage, etc. But just for you to learn, I'm going to go through all the steps. Configure instance details is the next step. Here you can pick how many instances you want. You can launch how many other instances you want in a single shot and you will have those many machines available. I just want one and there is additional configuration here which is a little advanced, the network you want to use and all that. Click on next where you can pick the storage. By default you get 8 gig for a free tier. I'm going to leave that as it is. Next you can optionally add tags which are key value pairs. So if you want to organize your AWS instances by giving them tags, you can do that so that you can put all the Zango related instances with one tag and then all the node related instances with the key value pair and then all the Java instance and so on. And you can use these tags later on as a DevOps engineer or a developer to search for all the Zango instances, etc. So this is optional, but very useful. Click on next where you can configure a security group. You can read the description here. A security group allows us to define all the security rules for our application. By default, it will open up SSH connection to this instance so that we can connect to this instance from anywhere on the internet provided we have the valid uh, public and private certificates which you will configure in the last step which is very simple. So as you can see port 22 which is required for SSH is open. Review and launch. This is the last step where you can review everything you have done in the prior six steps. And when you click on this launch, it will ask you to generate a key pair. Read this description. A key pair consists of public key that AWS stores and a private key which you need to download so that you can connect to this instance once it is launched from your machine using tools like PuTTY, Mobile Xterm or simple SSH command from a Mac machine by using that private key. So in my case, I already have a key called AWS Zango. So I'm not going to generate. In your case, if you are doing this for the very first time, click on create a new key pair. Once you generate this key pair, you can use the same key pair for any number of instances you create. That is the beauty of it. You can give it a name. For me, I have given Zango AWS. So you can give whatever name you want. AWS Zango demo and so on. Once you do that, don't forget to download the key pair. It is very important. Download it, store it on your machine. You are going to need it when you connect to your instance once it is up and running. For me, I choose an existing key pair. This AWS Zango key pair is there on my machine already. I have downloaded it. And I acknowledge that I have access to the private key. In your case, you also need to acknowledge once you download the key pair. Click on launch instance that will launch off the instance with all the configuration we have given and you can click on this this is the instance id click on that id that will take you to the instance dashboard initially you can check the status right here it says it is pending once it is up we'll see that status here and we'll be able to connect to the instance there we go it's up and running very quick so you have a virtual server and you can give it a name. If you want to give it a name, you can click here, say Zango server, save it. Click on connect. Once you select the instance, you have a lot of options. See the instance state. 
you can stop the instance restart or reboot the instance and you can terminate the instance if you terminate the instance the instance is gone all your applications everything on that will be gone so use it with caution when you are not using an instance feel free to terminate it you can launch any number of instances within the free tier you want so always if you are not using an instance do terminate it to connect to it click on this connect and here we have several options what we are going to use is a ssh client you can follow these simple steps up top here if you are on a mac machine you simply this is the key file which you have downloaded on your machine use a change mode 400 make sure the permissions are there on the key file and then you can use this command the ssh command from your command line if you are on mac these are the steps copy it and paste the command from your command line you will be able to connect to this instance which we'll be doing in the next few lectures if you are on windows i will show you how to connect to AWS EC2 instance by using PuTTY or MOBA XTERM in the next couple of lectures.